Today I'm going to show you five different ways to hang your macrame. Stay tuned. So the first one is the constrictor knot, which happens to be the most popular one among textile artists. Personally, it's not my favorite, but it is a good method, so I'm going to show you anyways. So to do this, place your cord around your dowel and form an X. And I find it easier to put the cord through a tapestry needle when we're working with finer cord like this. And I'm just going to slide the tapestry needle up through where our cross intersects. And then just make sure that you pull your knot tight. And that is a constrictor knot. Now tying your second one is a little bit trickier than the first one. So you want to drape your cord across your wooden dowel. And then you want to wrap your cord around your dowel again, forming an X. And then of course, we're going to take our tapestry needle and then slide it right in between where our cross intersects. It's amazing how this one little knot is so secure. The more you tug on it, the tighter the knot becomes. So just give the ends a little bit of a snip and that is the constrictor knot method. The slip knot method is my favorite fastest way to hang a wall hanging. So to do this, make a loop and then wrap the small tail end around your loop and then through the center. If you've done a lot of knitting and crochet like I have, you should probably be very comfortable with this knot. But the best part about this knot for macrame is that you can stretch your slip knot as big or as little as you want and it'll fit over any awkward branches. Alrighty, so tighten your slip knot on your wooden dowel and then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We're gonna form a slip knot just like we did before. And then we're gonna place it over on the other side of our wooden dowel. Pull your slip knots taut. And then what I like to do is I like to tie a half hitch just to make sure that it's secure and in place. For me, this method is the fastest way. So now that I showed you the fastest way, I'm gonna show you the most time consuming way. Find the center of two strands of cords and then tie it onto your wooden dowel using a reverse lark's head knot. But make sure that the outside strand is a good two to three times longer than the center. And now we're gonna start with our spiral knots. So to do a spiral knot, it's just like doing a square knot, only we're only focusing on one side. We're not gonna be alternating sides like we would for a square knot. So always start with, for my case, it's the left side. Okay, so we're going to keep on tying our spiral knots until we get the correct length that we're going to need. And even though this is the most time consuming, I think it looks really delicate and feminine. I think it's really pretty and totally worth the effort. Okay, so once you reach the desired length, you're just going to wrap it around the other side. And we're just going to tie a regular overhand knot here. And once you're comfortable with that and it's in place, what I like to do is to flip it around and then just tie a couple of overhand knots on the other side just to make sure it's secure. Now a braid is a really fun way to make it interesting. So grab three strands of cord. I'm using two white and one brown. Find the center by folding it in half and then take your loop and tie a reverse lark's head knot on your wooden dowel. Divide your cord into groups of three and we're gonna create just a regular three strand braid. So to create a three strand braid, all you have to do is alternate your sides and putting it right into the center of your braid. So I'm going to take the right side and put it in the middle and then the left side and fold it and put it in the middle and then the right side and fold it and put it in the middle. <laughs> you get the point. 
I really love how the braid is a perfect opportunity to add new color to your art. And it makes it just a little bit more interesting than just a regular hanger. Okay, so once you get down to the end, I'm just going to tie a half hitch with two of the cords. That way it won't unravel on us. And of course, we're going to have to repeat the exact same thing to the other side. So now that we have two, we're going to gather it so it's in the center and we're going to just form a regular overhand knot to tie them together. So make sure you pull it taut and then give the ends a snip. I really love the detail on this one. So the lark's head loop is more commonly used on hoops, but it does work well on small wall hangings as well. My little wall hanging is dense, so I find it easier to use a tapestry needle. So pull your cord through the center and then what you're going to do is you're going to pull your tail end through the loop just like you would for a lark's head knot. And make sure that it's right in the very center of your work otherwise it won't be balanced. Next tie a regular overhand knot and then we're just going to snip off the excess from the top. Out of the five, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.